I think what happened at the fire festival could never happen to you. I know it can't happen to me. And I don't, I don't just mean because we're small time. We're not going to get millions of dollars of investors and we're not going to have 15 big influencers on Instagram and we're not going to have an island full of millionaires and billionaires and trust fund babies mocking us with documentaries. What happened at the fire Festival didn't have anything to do with scale. Scale certainly gave that crew the ability to go big and fail hard, but the real problem was the person who created it, whatever his name was, I forget, Douche Von Stuppington, who cares? Whatever his name was, he came in with a junkie mentality. And I don't mean to insult people who have addictions, but sometimes you see a junkie, someone who's addicted to something. It could be heroin or crack, or it could be a gambler chasing their losses. It also could be someone running something a lot like a Ponzi scheme, which is what Douche Von Stuppenberg was doing. He was forced, a Ponzi scheme in essence, forces you to rob from Peter to pay Paul. You have to take in, you take in $10,000 in investment. He played with bigger numbers, but stay with me. And nothing happens with it. So rather than shut it down, it's a failure, and say sorry to your investor, you go, second round of funding, and you get 30000 And you use 10000 to pay back your other guy. And now you have 20000 but you owe 30000 Something better hit, because if it doesn't, you're always chasing this. That's basically how a Ponzi scheme works. It's, I've dumbed it down a lot. Look it up. It crashed down with Bernie Madoff in 2008. His house of cards, very intricately built. My little stupid explanation of a Ponzi scheme is nowhere close to what he was doing. But the crash happened, and now I need my nest egg that I gave to you, I thought, a legitimate investor. Oops, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have the money. So this guy, Douche von Stupenberg, the fire Festival, goes in a junkie, an addict, chasing, hey man, you got any more of that festival money, is what's happening. So he makes the two biggest mistakes you can make, whether you're producing theater for a run of six to eight weeks, and apparently it scales up to things I knew nothing about, like fire festivals on private islands that were allegedly owned by drug dealers or weren't. They switched islands, whatever. Two, two mistakes he made. Because of that mentality of need, 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 and I can't wait. One, not enough runway. They said four to five years, two, three years at most. That's what every expert told him he needed to do a festival that size and scale. You got the coin. At least he appeared to have the coin. He definitely had some people willing to risk money on him. So let's assume you don't know that he's ponzying it up on the side. You don't know he's a junkie who's chasing his losses like a gambling addict. The guy looks like he could get money. I'd have fallen for it. I would have invested. I certainly would have worked for him. He looked like he had the money. And honestly, most of the guys who have the money do look like Douche von Stupenberg. So whatever. But you need runway. You need time. And you can't buy your way out of that problem which he had to think he could because he's got a monkey on his back. Need money, need money, need money, need money. It's a junkie mentality. He didn't listen to the experts and he didn't give himself enough runway. And those two are tied together. When people who know what they're doing, especially some of the folks he was talking to, like those cats in both documentaries, I think on the Hulu one, they focus a little bit more on one of the players who had done this before, man. He had done big festivals with rich douchebags there. He had done Coachella and all this kind of stuff and made it popular. He knew you need two to three years. I, him, the expert, I need two to three years, even with your giant pocketbook. So you're never going to run into this problem as long as you, A, don't chase your losses, learn when to cut your losses, admit your failures and move on. Hey, my weird credit card thing didn't work out. Oopsie doopsie. You guys want to start over at zero with a new investment opportunity? It happens. There's tons of success stories of billionaires and millionaires and successful CEOs who failed and, failed and 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 succeeded. And when they hit, they hit big. Angel investors know these stories better than I do. And then number two, when someone, say you come to me and say you want to do a small vaudeville show for under a $20,000 budget. Well, that's my area, baby. I'm an expert on that. Listen to me when I tell you. And maybe you go hear something different from someone else with equal experience. And now you have to weigh our opinions because some of this is opinion. But when you seek the advice of an expert, at least take it in and then don't overwrite it with your own non-advice. Expert to expert can compete. Me and someone else playing in the same space, some hypnotist who works on a $20,000 budget and me, the weird sideshow guy. Fine, we can disagree. But you, the amateurish idiot who knows nothing and barely plays in the $200 pool, no, I'm the expert in the room. And then if I go into the room with the guys who do Coachella, I shut up and listen because they play with millions and they play with a bigger ticket price and more people and more logistics than my tiny little shitty show. So don't worry about it. The fire Festival's never going to happen to you. Small time version won't happen. 
Just keep your head, keep your wits, and don't get in over your head. And when you do, listen to the experts. All right, that's our pep talk. Get back to work.